Hello everyone! Welcome back to AAS Publishing and the video series on publishing in the AAS journals as a referee. And I'm delivering this one in my sparkly new AAS logo shirt, which you should recognize as the logos uh, on the right of these videos. We also have nice pins and stickers that you can get at a AAS meeting coming up near you. Uh, Honolulu is the next one, so perhaps we'll see you there on the floor of the AAS journals. So, on to it! On serving as a referee, this is number five uh, uh, in the series, part two of this week's uh, adventure, on writing a good referee report. So in the last video, we covered preparing to write a report, various questions, things you should be on the lookout for as you go through a paper, as you read a paper once, twice, three times. And so now it's time to put your notes, put your thoughts together in a good referee report and we'll talk about what's good and what's not so good um, in a referee report. Okay, so off we go. We're going to write a report. <clears throat> so, first thing you want to do is you want to start your report by briefly summarizing the purpose and the results of the article. Okay, this shows the authors and it also shows the scientific editor that you have read the work <laughs> and that you understand the work. <laughs> um, this is important. Um, to do, to sort of summarize in your own words, not don't cut and paste from the paper, um, uh, in your own words what this article is about uh, and, and the results of the paper, okay? So then you want to, uh, somewhere in your report, uh, give your opinion if the manuscript represents significant new results. Again, that's the primary metric for publication. Uh, and those significant new results should be on observations or theory applied directly to astrophysical systems. So sometimes we get papers that uh, are interesting topics uh, and they somehow slide through the scientific editor um, and it might be great stuff but it's not directly applied to astrophysical systems so um, make note of that. So give your opinion on whether the results contain significant new results or not. And <clears throat> you want to say, be specific about things that are, are good, particularly interesting about the manuscript. It is the rare case where a manuscript is just completely bad. Um, those are all filtered up front. <laughs> so by the time they go out for peer review, uh, there's usually some positive things you can say about the manuscript. So if you're looking to give a balanced referee report, say what is good in the manuscript. Say what they're, what's, uh, what's positive about the manuscript. Okay. So then if, after you've said what's good about a manuscript uh, and you want to offer some uh, critique of the manuscript, be specific. Don't just say, this result is wrong. Um, and I've gotten reports like that. <laughs> I'm sure other scientific editors have as well. So you have to say why it is wrong, okay? Not just it's wrong. So it could be things like, I'm quasi making this up. These assumptions are invalid. This key factor is not adequately addressed. Uh, method of collecting data is flawed. They made a mathematical error. Um, and you want to back up with evidence, your criticism. So this could be references to the literature. It could be counterexamples. It could be the mathematics, where the mathematical error may lie, right? Don't just say this result is wrong because it made a mathematical error and then don't say anything <laughs> about where the error is, <laughs> right? So um, be specific and back up your criticism with evidence. We're looking for evidence, not just opinion. Okay, so back it up with uh, evidence. Okay. You want to clearly state in your report what changes are needed to bring a manuscript to the required quality standards of the AAS journals for publication, if you think the manuscript should eventually be published. Um, so sometimes reports comes in and they are generally fine, but it's really kind of unclear what the authors are supposed to do, right? So if it's just a, a philosophical uh, discussion, that's fine, but it doesn't really tell the authors what changes they need to make to uh, bring the manuscript up to the bar. So be clear about what changes you as the referee 
seek in the manuscript to help improve a manuscript and bring it to publication. Okay? Got it. Provide full references to earlier work if you uh, believe the research does not add anything new. Don't just say something like, ah, this was all done by Smith 2016 or, you know, Wu 2018. Okay, that's un an unresolvable reference, <laughs> right? Uh, give the first couple authors, tell the journal, give a DOI, give the journal numbers, something where uh, both the scientific editor and uh, particularly the scientific editor uh, can track um, the earlier work um, uh, and perhaps the authors as well if they're doing a revision to see uh, what these uh, earlier work is. So, so give complete references, please. Uh, detail references that the authors may have neglected or o overlooked to include any references uh, that, that might be inaccurate or inappropriate, but full references. Um, things you want to avoid in a referee report are saying that the authors must include references and then list off 10 of your articles. Okay, this is referee reports are not an opportunity for you to juice juice the citations to your papers, <laughs> to be blunt, <laughs> okay? Um, don't do that. Um, or that the authors must discuss some unrefereed, unpublished manuscripts. What may be posted elsewhere, non-refereed, does not matter, does not impact, okay? So if it's in the refereed literature, the published literature, that's fine, then they should discuss it. Uh, but some postings on some place somewhere um, uh, are not fair game to have the authors uh, discuss. Okay, so those are uh, two things that will get you uh, some flames, <laughs> orange flames there from the scientific editor. Okay, be civil, be professional, and polite in your report. Okay, do not make, imply, or insinuate personal comments or criticize the authors as individuals. You are providing a review of the science of the effort and not the people. Okay, so keep it focused on the paper. Otherwise, your report is likely to be redacted or if it's bad enough in that regard, it will be discarded and move on with another referee for someone who can be civil, professional, and polite. Um, so please do that. Okay, kind of obvious, but there have been cases that um, are not, okay? So let's not go there. Is the English understandable? Uh, you know, you're not the copy editor, so you don't need to correct every spelling or grammatical error in the manuscript, but sometimes it is useful uh, to say, oops, this is a typo, typo here, that kind of stuff is fine. Uh, and it, if the language is, is really an issue, uh, then it is helpful to point out where the phrasing the dropping of verbs, the drop, dropping of adverbs, things like that, uh, can obscure the scientific meaning of, of what the authors are attempting to communicate. Okay, so language as need be as it relates to the science. Okay, should it get that far and it gets uh, accepted, we do have a set of copy editors who will um, polish the English when we get there. But uh, English, if it obscures the science, you should definitely raise in your report. And finally, <clears throat> you should make a recommendation. Okay. Revise, that's the most common. Uh, accept, that's just also a very common one at the 85% level uh, after a couple of revisions of the manuscript. Then there's reject, and unfortunately on the AAS uh, website in the form it just says reject. Uh, but it doesn't quite have the granularity that is needed sometimes. So in your report, uh, it's useful, or in the comments to the scientific editor, if you mean reject, as in reject this version of the manuscript, uh, i.e. that you're willing to see another version of the manuscript, or whether your recommendation of reject means reject any version of the manuscript, in other words, a summary rejection, uh, that somehow it's, it's bad enough that no matter what the authors do, um, it's not suitable for publication in the AAH journals. So make a recommendation. And don't be wimpy uh, <clears throat> with a recommendation of let the community decide um, to sort of give a favorable impression on work you know that is weak. Okay, so don't
don't be wimpy, diary, diary of a wimpy kid. Um, give a firm recommendation on what your assessment of the manuscript is. Okay. Then the scientific editor is going to make a decision based on the report. It's sometimes plural. Uh, sometimes there is two referees on a paper. And that's perfectly fine. Um, and so remember that the goal of a referee is to give a recommendation. The referee is not accepting or uh, uh, having a revision. The referee is not making the decision. Okay, that's made with the scientific editor. Referees are providing input into that decision. So keep that in mind. Uh, and so our goal is to receive your referee report within three weeks or 10 days if it's a letter. Letter operates on a quicker time scale. Uh, of you agreeing to provide a, a review. Um, and if you need more time, if the manuscript is complex and you need an extra week or so, it's perfectly fine uh, to be in communication with the scientific editor and uh, request another couple of days, another week. Things do come up, people get sick, do, 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 do. lots of reasons why you might need a little extra time. Okay, that's perfectly fine. Just keep your scientific editor in the loop. Uh, and after two, three weeks, uh, some referees have been known to disappear <laughs> at this critical junction after having the manuscript for two or three weeks. Uh, and this is just simply bad behavior. Um, it gets a, a flame. I should put two flames on this one. Um, you know, to, to say you're going to provide a review and then three weeks later you just go radio silent um, is, is just not nice at all. <laughs> bad behavior. Don't do it. Um, so get your report in on time, communicate if you need more time, it's all perfectly fine, okay? So referees are anonymous by default. If you, the referee, wish to waive your anonymity, then you should make that clear to the scientific editor. And if the scientific, scientific editor agrees, and they don't always, because sometimes anonymous reports will get a better response out of the authors, in fact, I'd say most of the time, um, then even if anonymity is waived, then you still cannot have direct correspondence with the authors. Um, that is still forbidden. The journals, the scientific editor has to be in the loop on all communications. Okay, so no secret smoke signals, Twitters, Instagrams, whatever. <laughs> okay, always keep the journals in the loop in that conversation between authors and the referee. So things to remember on this, uh, keep it confidential. You're in a privileged position as a referee to be um, assessing the manuscript. So don't blast it on Facebook. Okay? Do not contact the authors. Um, if that comes to light, and it certainly has, there are some referees who uh, at the beginning decided that they didn't believe in the referee process and they were gonna communicate directly with the authors. Well, okay. That's fine, <laughs> but we're not using your report. I'm not using your report, okay? It's the scientific editor who makes the decision and he needs, or she, needs to be uh, in that communication loop as it goes forward, okay? And finally, remember to review the research, not the researcher, okay? And so this will wrap up this video on how to write a good referee report. And we've got two more in this series and I hope to see you in about two weeks. Thanks, bye-bye.